Hi guys, in this video I'm going to share with you my top 10 edtech tools for hybrid learning. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tom Blakemore and I'm a teacher here in Dubai. I've been doing hybrid or blended learning, which is what some people call it, since September 2020, the start of the academic year. And I can't lie to you, blended learning is this completely new form of teaching that we have had to learn this academic year and it's quite exhausting. So I'm hoping that some of the tech tools that I share within this video are gonna be useful, hopefully save you time and make you a little bit more efficient and also benefit the children's learning to make them have a little bit more fun through some of the tools that I share. Now, for those of you out there who aren't really sure what hybrid or blended learning is, it's basically where you have some children in the classroom, for me, it's the majority of the children in the classroom, and then some who are online. And as a result, you still need to be able to cater for them in the same way that you would in the classroom. Now, there's different models that you would do that with. You would have an asynchronous, which means an on-demand sort of style of learning where children are able to access learning at their own pace. Then you have synchronous learning, which is where the children are on line with you at the same time. So hopefully some of the tools I'm gonna to share with you will benefit you in a range of different circumstances and I can talk about how I've used them with my class. So let's start off with number one, which is something I use every single day and that is of course Google Classroom. Now I've made a range of different videos on how to use Google Classroom. It can be a little bit cumbersome, however, Google Classroom is really good for children to be able to access learning, whether that's through Google Suites, Google Docs, Google Slides, things like that, or other things such as links and videos. You can create a range of different topics that the children are able to access. You can invite other teachers into your Google Classroom and that way be able to collaborate and reuse different posts from one another, which can save time. As I said before, I've made a full video sharing how to do that and it's really beneficial for your own time, so feel free to go and check that out at your own pace. I really like the way that it's easy for the children to access Google Classroom at their own pace and for me to be able to schedule posts for the children. I have a range of different topics set out for my class so that the children know where and when to access things at the right time. That then frees up my time to be able to focus on learning inside the classroom and then also focus on learning with the children synchronously when we're online. Number two is Seesaw. Now, in my personal opinion, I actually think Seesaw is much more user-friendly as a learning management system for children. I think it's a little bit user-friendly in terms of the children being able to use and access the work. I also think it's fantastic because I can set different activities and give my own vocal instructions with ease and then the children can also respond back. I also find it really easy for me to be able to mark children's work and return it to them. I've created another tutorial sharing how to use Seesaw, so feel free to check that one out if you are interested. The main reason I really like Seesaw is the community posts and lessons that other people create it can really help save time, which I find I'm short on whilst doing this hybrid learning because you're constantly focusing about making sure that lessons are online at the same time. So being able to just gain some sort of inspiration through the lessons that other people upload onto Seesaw is another fantastic feature through Seesaw. I also really like the way that Seesaw continuously update their system, which is really beneficial for me as a teacher to know that it's up to date so that I can focus on things with the children more effectively. Number three is Google Jamboards. I'll be completely honest with you, this is not something I regularly use with my class because they're a little bit younger. However, Google Jamboards is fantastic for upper key stage two onwards. It's really good to be able to share a picture so that the children can collaborate and share different ideas, such as language to describe the setting that you've put up, or whether it might be something where it's an agree or disagree and children put their names on through post-it notes. It's great for collaboration and sharing ideas. I have created another video that shares 10 different ways that you can use Google Jamboards with your class, so feel free to check that one out. It's just a fantastic tool to really benefit collaboration. Number four is my viewboard. Although my viewboard have promoted through this channel in the past, this is not a paid promotion. My viewboard is something that I genuinely use regularly with my class. It's really good because I'm able to share what I have on the board with my children at home at the time because they're able to access the link that I put onto my Google Classroom. That way they can see what I'm sharing on my board at the same time while I'm talking. They do have a feature that's a video feature although I regularly use Zoom just on the side, to be completely personally honest. And then from there, what's really, really effective is that I can just share a range of different videos straight from what they call the magic box. 
There's a range of different features on the Magic Box. It's really, really good if you have the Windows version too. That's their most powerful version, but for me, because I have Mac and my whiteboard is through the Mac services, I use the online version, which is just as good too. As I said before, this is not a paid promotion, but I do genuinely use their product and believe it is really effective for learning inside the classroom and hybrid learning. Number five has got to be my favorite edtech tool, Padlet. I use Padlet every single week and it's fantastic for collaborative learning with those children who are both at home and in class. It's great because other children can see what other people get up to at home, if they are, and then they can also share their learning from inside the classroom. There's a range of different ways that children can share their thoughts, whether it's through creating a video, uploading a photo or audio if they're a little bit shy of video. They can then upload links to other pieces of work that they've created. And there's a range of different ways that you can use Padlet to benefit learning. I've not created a tutorial on a range of different ways to, to use Padlet, but please like or put a comment down on this video if you would like to see that sort of tutorial too. Number six is a fantastic EdTech website that's really beneficial for learning and it's really beneficial for parents who might be struggling to support their children at home and that is Khan Academy. Khan Academy has a range of different videos that are free to access to support children with their learning. That's really beneficial for teachers when you're focusing on in-classroom learning and the children just need a little bit of support at home and the parents aren't available. Number seven is Thinglink. Thinglink links things. That's how I like to remember Thinglink and I find it really beneficial for my children in class. What it does is effectively have a picture or video and bring it to life with links. And those links can add a little bit of information or take them to other websites too. I have created another video sharing how to use ThinkLink. The one way I use it at the moment is with morning activities. I'll just have a photo with a range of different links in a one, two, three, four, five sequential order so that the children know what to do first, second, and so on. Eight has got to be Kahoot. I don't know what it is about Kahoot, but my class and I are obsessed with Kahoot. It doesn't matter if children are at home or in school, they can both take part in the Kahoot quiz. I can upload the link onto my Google Classroom or Seesaw, whatever your learning management platform is, and the children take part in a Kahoot quiz. I find it fantastic as a teacher because I don't have to start from the bare bones creating a quiz. There's a range of different community quizzes that have already been created, and sometimes it's great just to be able to go onto those and adapt it for my class, take certain questions out, adapt it, and that way the children can take part in that quiz too. I find the children just become absolutely obsessed with the competitivity. You can also download their results from there and use them for whatever assessment you need to too. Number nine is Moat. Moat is, in my opinion, the most effective verbal feedback tool to use with Google Classroom at the moment. Although Seesaw does have its own verbal feedback built into it, with Moat, I can give verbal feedback through Google Slides or directly onto Google Classroom so that the children don't just see a load of text. This is great for me with younger children because I can then give those verbal instructions and the children fully understand the tone in which I'm using my voice to try and give that constructive feedback if they are at home or in the classroom too. It's also been beneficial if the children have done some work in the class and I just want to give some feedback for them to do at another point and they're not able to access me immediately in the classroom. My final favorite EdTech tool, number 10, is Badger. Badger is a relatively new EdTech tool that I've become familiar with. And what you're able to do with Badger is create your own digital award, and then from there, the children are able to receive the award. This is fantastic, depending on your school and the regulations at your school. If you're not able to give out those physical resources, the children then collect those badges, and it's a bit like having a, a, a badge book, I suppose, at the end of the day. And from there, it's also able to be shared onto social media, which is great if you have a school Twitter account or something along those lines. That brings me to the end of the video. I could have shared even more EdTech tools from there, but I've created other videos sharing other EdTech tools, so feel free to check those out too. I did mention at the start of the video, it's still important to make sure that you're able to master the EdTech tools. So although I've shared 10, Maybe even start with just one or two. See how you're able to integrate that into your class before going and jumping into other resources too. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have, feel free to like it. It's always really beneficial and helps me grow as a channel, which means I'm able to reach other teachers too. If you are new, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I will see you in the next one. Until then, I'm out.